Hi guys. Well, it is another cold, nasty winter night here, and uh, now late in November. It is Monday, November 21st, 2022, and uh, <laughs> guys, I'm somewhat embarrassed to admit this, but for the first time in good God, how many years am I going <coughs> to do a rant about chemtrails, what the conspiracy wackos call chemtrails, and Sandy and I call cap trails for capitalism trails, but officially called contrails. And uh, so I don't know if there's anybody, you know, that I have left listening to me on uh, Humpty Dumpty Tribe anymore, but in the first few years, uh, first two or three years of this channel, one of my major things I talked about were chemtrails. Uh, I was fully into the chemtrail rabbit hole. So while I never went as far, you know, as the Alex Jones uh, ass-licking toady crowd, you know, talking about how Bill Gates and uh, Klaus Schwab and the usual list of suspects were... Uh, you know, killing us all, we're depopulating the planet by poisoning us and the, you know, poisoning the food supply and all of us directly with aluminum and barium and all of this crap. I mean, I was down that rabbit hole for years. I think you can probably still find uh, plenty of my old videos up there. And, uh, but, you know, as I finally began to pull my head out of my conspiracy whack oh ass, and, uh, well, you know, I started, like, really, and like, what, what are these things? So, what I got, so that, what, where I ended up on, there, there's, there were all sorts of subgroups of conspiracy wackos, so what I did was I took the, like, the Doomer chemtrail wacko group, and I went with the school of thought that these chemtrails, you know, these persistent contrails, you know exactly what I'm talking about, uh, what they were were a clandestine operation by, I was never exactly who the nefarious they were, but I thought there was some clandestine operation where they were putting something in the, uh, in, in mixing in with the jet fuel or putting in separate tanks on the wings of commercial airliners. And, and, and I guess, I, I, you know, I had a hard time thinking, how could these commercial pilots be in on this? But anyway, somehow these things were being created, and my guess it was by aluminum and barium that whether in the jet fuel or just on separate tanks uh, in addition to the uh, exhaust pipe of the plane were creating these things to reflect sunlight back into the air, the solar radiation management. So I just thought it was uh, a, it was a clandestine solar radiation management operation uh, going on. Uh, and I was saying then, and I'm saying now more than ever, that at some point it will not be clandestine. They will be doing it openly in your face. The New York Times will be openly talking about it, and 90% of the clueless fucking morons on the planet will be cheering it on. Nothing in that part has changed. It is clear to me that we are going to see this, uh, th these chemtrails, uh, solar radiation management unfolding uh, on this planet in the near future, and there won't be anything clandestine about it. And uh, there's a book that I still haven't read, I believe the title, Under a Milky White Sky, 
that describes this. So I have never changed course on making predictions that this is going to be an in-your-face, uh, you know, uh, attempt to cool the planet, which is going to unleash, uh, you know, these unintended consequences every bit as bad, if not worse, than the ones they're trying to fix. But anyway, th that is still coming. Uh, but at that point, a few years ago, I believed that was already going on and had been going on since probably the late 1990s, the mid to late 1990s. And as I started to question it, getting these little aha moments that I could be a conspiratorial wacko, I remember the exact moment where my conspiracy wacko chemtrail wacko friend and I, we were, we stepped out of a, uh, a restaurant in, the, in downtown Austin, Texas on a, in a full moon, a beautiful full moon over Austin and right, I mean, just right across the full moon right directly across this big full moon in the middle of the night was one of these uh, chemtrails, these, you know, horizon to horizon. You know exactly what I'm talking about. The full moon was illuminating this. It was actually quite beautiful. And, uh, and I remember turning to my friend, you know, she's the one who got me down the rabbit hole, and I said, darling, uh, now, 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 she was a little deeper. She was, uh, she was beyond me. She was thinking it was a depopulation agenda. Uh, but, <coughs> you know, she, she sort of agreed with me that I could be right. Uh, to, so, and I remember having this guy, I said, darling, how do you explain this? Why would they be doing this at night? It seems to me, it seems to me that if they are chemtrailing at night, that what they're doing is trapping, trapping the heat, not reflecting it back, uh, you know, from the sun coming down. Now it would be having the opposite effect. It would be keeping the heat from escaping and exhaling during the night. And then I started really paying attention to these goddamn things. They go on 24 hours a day. People just don't realize that these things are every bit as common at night as they are in the day. And I just kept saying, there's a hole in your argument, uh, Hambone. Uh, logic tells me, uh, but, but then it, it ended up when I finally full pulled my head out of my ass it is when uh, my buddy uh, finally pointed out and, 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 and uh, it was easy to confirm that these uh, things have been going back all the way to, to the mid-1940s that uh, as planes started flying higher. Now, anyway, you can find these quote chemtrail photos going back to the 1940s. Ansel Adams has a fantastic one uh, from 1954, one of these pictures. And so I finally pulled my head out of my ass and realized I was completely full of shit. I, I went and ate my tinfoil hat and lost about 300 subscribers. You wouldn't believe the hate mail I got, I, I actually lost one of my closest friendships over this when, uh, I st when I stopped believing in chemtrails. It was more important for this dude to have me agree with him that chemtrails were real than the, than the f friendship was. I, I, I mean, he never spoke to me again after I told him I no longer uh, believed in chemtrails, end of a friendship. 
hate mail, uh, people, uh, you know, canceling, the, anyway. I mean, this is a religion. And so anyway, I just kind of dropped it and, and I don't talk about it anymore. I don't have any fucking time for the motherfucking Dane Wigington and Dutch sense crowds. All of that is the biggest bunch of fucking unadulterated horseshit. They're contrails. Uh, so anyway, that's where it sat for, for how many years and, and uh, with all of these fucking conspiracy wackos. You can find them all over the place, over there on Dane Wigington. I'm sure talking about fucking Bill Gates uh, depopulating the planet by squirting uh, aluminum and barium and selenium all over our, our, you know, all over our food supply, killing the trees, starting forest fires, whatever. And then I open up the mainstream media news and find Bill Gates is saving the planet from chemtrails. Yes. Uh, from this story today, this long involved story off of some outfit called Canary Media. I'm sure the chemtrail wackos would love that. The uh, story is headlined, major airlines are teaming up to tackle planet warming plane contrails. So I'm just going to read the first, I'll, I'll put the link on here, and but I want to get down in, into it. I'll just read the opening few paragraphs. <clears throat> airlines know by now that carbon dioxide emissions are not their only planet warming problems. Condensation trails, which form in an aircraft's wake, can also contribute to climate change in outsized ways. Yet, while companies say they're working to curb CO2, including by developing cleaner fuels and more efficient jet engines, the industry has done relatively little to confront those wispy white contrails that streak the sky. A new aviation initiative aims to kickstart those lagging uh, efforts. This is called the Contrail Impact Task Force. Announced today, joins major airlines and aircraft makers together with leading contrail researchers. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Uh, RMI, a clean energy nonprofit, and Bill Gates founded, Bill Gates founded Breakthrough Energy are spearheading the task force which met for the first time in October. Oh, and then they put a disclaimer. Canary Media is an independent affiliate of RMI. All right, now the, uh, now the wackos are going, aha! Bill Gates is now uh, taking over the mainstream media uh, anyway, yeah, so Bill Gates, saving the planet from climate warming, uh, climate warming, I always, uh, you know, so, okay, what's going on here? This is Andrew Chen from RMI, blah, blah, blah. Quote, contrails have been the elephant in the room for the aviation sector for decades, plural, close quote. It has long been unclear just how much contrails contribute to climate change, but recent research has shed more light on the issue. Uh, one study uh, found that contrails and other non-CO2 aircraft emissions warm the planet twice as much as the actual carbon dioxide released by airplanes. A study last year 
found that while aviation contributes about 2.4% of global annual CO2 emissions, flying is actually responsible for 4% of global warming when you factor in uh, these uh, contrails, that it, that it adds 1.6% of total global warming. And all of this time, I was, you know, I was thinking it was, it was a way to cool the planet. So uh, what the hell is going uh, on here? Uh, quote, we are now at a place where we know the impact is quite significant. That means we have to do something about it. So then this, uh, I mean, this is a long involved uh, article, but we, we have to get way down in this thing. Um... Uh, to find what the hell they're talking about. Okay, a cloudy, a cloudy white line slicing through the sky is not always a climate threat, but when it is, it is especially potent. Put simply, contrails form from the soot and water vapor that spews from jet engines. The hot, humid exhaust mixes with cold, low-pressure air found high in the sky, creating white trails of condensation. Most of the time, contrails quickly disappear. But at certain altitudes and in certain atmospheric conditions, the water vapor can attach itself to soot particles and form ice crystals. Then, rather than dissipate, these crystals become cirrus clouds that fan out and persist, trapping the heat radiating off the Earth's surface and contributing to global warming. This is not necessarily a problem during the day. Clouds, including contrails, and contrails are clouds. They are cirrus clouds, and they're an accidental byproduct of global capitalism. That's why they're called cattrails. Uh, this isn't necessarily a problem during the day. Clouds also reflect sunlight back into space and cool the Earth's surface, balancing or even canceling contrails heat trapping effect during the day. At night, however, that does not happen. Uh, this is one of these uh, Arrow, one of these people who study this shit. Anyway, it's those persistent nighttime contrails that are most important in terms of the climate uh, effects. Uh, and so while the plane's fuel blend and engine type can also influence and what they're talking about while they're trying to figure all that out. So what they're saying is, uh, and, and again, I'll put the link on here, but I'm so glad to finally get this explanation. So these, these conditions where these, uh, you know, these persistent contrails are formed, it, it, it's, you can actually, on the flight path, uh, you can actually, what they're trying to figure out, I mean, it can be done, it's just not that easy to do at the spur of the moment when, when the, you know, when the dude's in the cockpit, but you could actually look at the atmospheric conditions that the plane is flying, this is way oversimplification, and you can figure out if a plane 
flies through this particular layer of the atmosphere at this particular time of day, or more importantly, time of night, then you're going to create these things. And what they're trying to do is figure out a way to be able to more quickly uh, identify these, uh, these areas of the, the uh, atmosphere, you know, on the flight path of the airplane. So it's coming along, and if they could just identify ahead of time, it's not that big a deal. It says that the plane just needs to go up or down about 2,000 feet. So if a plane is cruising along at 35,000 feet and they see uh, 15 minutes ahead, they're going to head into one of these, uh, you know, chemtrail producing pockets of the atmosphere, they can just go under it, you know, drop down from 35 to 33,000 feet and go under it, or just go over it. And, uh, and problem solved. Now, uh, I honestly think this is complete hopium. It's never going to fucking happen. Uh, but anyway, at least it explains it. But, uh, so I am, I, I do feel like I have been vindicated after how many years uh, of, of just using my, my logic, thinking that these things have to be warming the planet at night. And uh, th that anybody who thinks that I used to think uh, that this is some clandestine effort uh, to cool this planet, uh, it, it is a clueless fucking moron. But uh, anyway, it is nice to be vindicated. But uh, I hope this will be the last chemtrail rant I have to do until they actually do start uh, spraying this shit up in the stratosphere, which is coming. So I guess all of the uh, chemtrail wackos will be vindicated. It's not a matter of if, it's only a matter of when and how much they're going to be vindicated. Uh, but I guess we will find out uh, when it happens, because when that happens, you can kiss goodbye your blue skies. Kiss them goodbye. So get out there and enjoy your blue skies while you still can before the chemtrail wackos take a victory lap. Oh, I need a drink. Bye, guys.